hello there this is Blackie's Storytime book and it was published slap bang in the middle of World War One so a lot of the stories are quite war themed through the annual but today I've chosen a lovely story it's very quaint it's about a young man called Wilfred and he is in his best clothes and he's looking a bit willful um, and the story has lots of lovely language that reflects the era, so it's very sweet. I hope you enjoy it. The Molly Cuddle. I must leave you a while, said Aunt Cecilia to Wilfred. I have some shopping to do. Now, don't you move a step from here. Sit perfectly still. Do you understand? Or mayn't I look about for shells? asked Wilfred. Shells? Rubbish, said Aunt Cecilia. Why, you'd get your feet wet at once. Stay exactly where you are, she added severely, and off she went. Wilfred sighed. He was staying with Aunt Cecilia at Cocklegate, and he didn't enjoy it a bit. He was never allowed to bathe or paddle or sail a boat or have a shrimp net or even to play barefoot on the sands. He just had to sit beside Aunt Cecilia with her knitting. And he had to wear spick and span clothes as if it were Sunday, not rough and tumble things like all the other children. In fact, he was what people call a molly coddle. But it wasn't his fault, it was his misfortune. He didn't want to be a molly coddle, quite the contrary, especially when he saw the other children running and splashing and shouting. He sat on the rocks and stared at the sea and presently he heard two little girls talking near him. He knew them well by sight. There's that boy again, said one, moping by himself as usual. Shall we ask him to play with us, Madge? Oh no, Bertha, said the second little girl. He's a regular molly coddle. He's afraid to move for fear of spoiling his clothes. Wilfred thought this was the cruelest speech he had ever heard. I expect he'd run away if we spoke to him, said Bertha, laughing. I don't suppose he can run, replied Madge, and she climbed down to the shore to launch her model yacht. Wilfred watched her with envy. Madge pushed the yacht out very carefully and called, Bertha, Bertha, do come and see how... Oh! The string slipped through her fingers and the yacht drifted away. Bertha was hunting for sea anemones some way off. She shouted, What's the matter? and didn't come. So Madge scrambled along shore trying to catch up her boat. She waded out and snatched at the floating string, but she always missed it. And the molly coddle sat on the rocks watching and thought bitterly, If I had been more like other boys, I should have secured the yacht by this time. Then Madge waded out further, and in one moment she was out of her depth, and all that could be seen of her was a red tam o shanter bobbing on the waves. Wilfred forgot he was a molly coddle, and he forgot he couldn't swim. All he thought about was poor Madge's danger. He tore off his coat and dashed into the water. He saw her come up, all dripping and gasping, and he shouted, Catch hold! and flung his coat towards her while he clutched on to one sleeve of it. And with a long pull and a strong pull, he dragged her into safety. Well done, my boy. You're a plucky little chap, said a gentleman who had run up, and he patted Wilfred on his very wet back. Thank God you are here, he added as he wrung Wilfred's hand. He was Madge's father. The molly coddle could hardly believe his ears. At this moment, Aunt Cecilia came back from shopping. What she would have said, nobody will ever know, for Madge's father did all the talking, and he insisted on taking Wilfred home with him to spend the rest of his holidays along with Madge and Bertha. And most wonderful of all, Aunt Cecilia said, very well. I called you a molly coddle, whispered Madge to Wilfred that evening. I was all wrong. You're not. In fact, I think you're the bravest boy I've ever met. So there.